This year, best-selling author and Jesuit priest, Father James Martin, will deliver the commencement addresses at Loyola University, Maryland and the University of Scranton. He will also be receiving his 12th and 13th honorary degrees, tying the late Tim Russert's record for honorary degrees from Jesuit colleges and universities. We recently sat down with Father Martin at the Cathedral of St. Matthew the Apostle in Washington, D.C. to discuss commencement season and Jesuit education. Father Jim, it is so wonderful to sit down with you today here at the Cathedral of St. Matthew the Apostle in Washington. Thanks, great to be here. Thank you so much. And you know, we're just down the road from AJCU. So next time you come to town, you'll have to come by our offices. I vow. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just a few days away from Easter, but right around the corner is another big annual spring ritual, commencement season. And this year, you will receive honorary degrees from Loyola University in Maryland and the University of Scranton, and serve as commencement speaker at both schools. With those two degrees, you will be an honorary alumnus of 13 U.S. Jesuit colleges and universities. How does that make you feel? Oh, very happy. I'm, <laughs> one of the great things about uh, going to these commencement uh, exercises is getting to meet all the students and getting to know the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to see what wonderful things happen in Jesuit education, and Jesuit higher education, is just a delight for me, uh, meeting the, the presidents, the faculty, the administration, and a lot of uh, really happy kids uh, who are graduating and who come up to me and talk about the value of their Jesuit education. I mean, they will explicitly talk about how much their Jesuit education has meant to them at their schools. That's awesome. I mean, what more could you hope for? <laughs> no, and it's great, and they use all the language. Uh, for example, uh, last year I remember I was at uh, Gonzaga, mm -hmm. and uh, people came up to me and said, you know, what was most exciting was core personalis, right? Cool. Uh, another person at um, Creighton University came up, uh, the parents, and said, you know, our daughter is so excited about the Majus, those kinds of things. So they really get it, and I think that the transmission of Jesuit values and virtues uh, at, at these uh, institutions of higher education, it's happening. Uh, awesome. At least the ones that come up to me. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's true. And they might be a fan of your books, but still, I, I, I would think that when they hear you speak that there's no way that they can't be inspired. And, and of course, when they see you on TV as well. <laughs> well, I think, you know, they're, they're inspired um, mainly by the professors that they've had and the yes. Jesuits they've come in contact with and the faculty members who embody Jesuit values. And it's really something. And I, I've spoken at other schools, and there is a qualitative difference mm -hmm. uh, between the the students from other schools and Jesuit educated students. I mean, you really can see the difference. That's really interesting. So, do you feel as though being awarded these degrees strengthens your connection to Jesuit higher education? Oh, yeah. I mean, I have never worked day one in Jesuit higher ed. I don't have a PhD. I've never worked in campus ministry. I have really zero connection to those schools other than, you know, my being a Jesuit and knowing Jesuit friends there. So being able to participate in this way and getting these honorary degrees uh, really does make me feel tied to these schools in a wonderful way and such that when I meet uh, graduates at book signings and parishes talks and things like that, uh, I'll be able to say like, hey, you know, go Eagles, go Broncos, <laughs> <laughs> go Greyhounds, go Royals. So I really do feel this connection and it's a, it's been a kind of education for me too. So yeah. normally you, you'll spend two or three days at the school, uh, you'll be taken around, you'll meet the faculty and, uh, you know, uh, different student leaders. And so you really get a sense of what the ethos uh, of the school is. And so, yeah, I really do feel connected in that way. That's fantastic. Well, today's seniors are graduating at a time when there is a lot of great division and a lot of uncertainty and, quite frankly, injustice in our society. What advice would you give them as they navigate their way through their vocations and moves to new cities, building their careers and relationships as young adults? Well, that's a great question. I think to sort of rely on your Jesuit training, mm -hmm. to rely on your Catholic training, your Christian training. Um, it's interesting that one of the documents that came out of our general congregation was about reconciliation. Uh, and so I think that's something that we can bring to the society at large. You know, but really, uh, looking at the values of being a man and woman for others, right? And this is yeah. kind of other directed uh, direction in Jesuit education that, that, you know, says to you, what can you contribute not just to your own, you know, personal uh, success, yeah. but to the community, to the common good? Um, and how can you be... 11 to use a Christian metaphor in this society. So uh, I think the um, I think that phrase from Father Rupe, man and woman for others really helps to kind of encapsulate um, Not only what we try to do in Jesuit higher education. Right. See I say we because yeah. you know, I feel part of it 
but um, how, how a student can take that and bring it to the, the outside world after graduation. Absolutely. You know, you mentioned parents coming up to you. What advice would you give to parents as they're seeing their kids graduate? <laughs> well, I would say enjoy it, first of all. The, the, the payments are over, basically. But, you know, really to, to be able to take some time uh, during commencement season, I think this goes for parents and students, and just be grateful. Mm -hmm. So one of the hallmarks of uh, Jesuit spirituality is uh, gratitude and resting in gratitude. And to the parents, I would say, look, you have sacrificed yourself, you know, your son or daughter has gone to this great Jesuit school for four years, and you've done a great job. You know, you've educated your son or daughter, you know, and maybe even sent them to Catholic or Jesuit high schools beforehand. Right. So take some time uh, during commencement weekend uh, and just rest in that gratitude with God and really, you know, uh, sort of celebrate things with your, with your child and your family as well. Absolutely. That's a great piece of advice. How do you tailor your commencement speeches to a particular college campus? And depending on local issues, might you need to address certain themes? You're speaking at Loyola this spring. Would a speech to students in Baltimore be a little bit different from the speech to students in Scranton, for example? Yeah, you know, I do try to stress the same things, to, to even if it's a different school. But I'll try to tailor it to the locale. I might, mm -hmm. uh, you know, talk about some local things that mm -hmm. are happening. But... I, in a sense, I, I also don't want to make it too kind of political. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to sort of give the students basically the advice that I wish I had when I was uh, 21. I also <laughs> like to keep it short. And as someone said to me, no one doesn't like short or funny. So those are the things <laughs> I try to do. Usually the students come up and they're so grateful if it's, you know, five or seven minutes. Yeah, well, you just touched on this, but in recent years, many colleges have struggled to find commencement speakers who will be inspirational but not controversial. I'm sure you're aware of all of these various things. How does that affect your messaging? Yeah, well, once again, I, I try not to be political. Mm -hmm. I would never say anything political, and certainly nothing about you know church teaching, God forbid. Um, and, and you know, really, if you focus on uh, what the graduates uh, need to hear, you know, mm -hmm. which is a message of hope, uh, some humor, some self-deprecation, you know, a lot of it's. A lot of my messages don't take yourself so seriously. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's too controversial in, in most quarters. Oh, no. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Having given commencement speeches many times before, what advice might you offer other commencement speakers who are trying to strike <laughs> that balance? Uh, no one doesn't like short and no one doesn't yeah. like funny. I really think that um, some of the commencement addresses I've heard just go on for way too yeah. long. Uh, and the other thing is, remember that these kids, you know, they just want to... They just want to have fun, yeah. so not to sort of gum things up by giving them this kind of like, you know, world historical address, you know, that goes on Absolutely. for 20 minutes about something that they're not interested in. I also know for prominent speakers, um, they'll give an address as a sort of public statement. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've seen that, mm -hmm. right? So Winston Churchill, for example, talked about the Iron Curtain in one of mm -hmm. his uh, commencement addresses, you know, years and years ago. And I always say, what about the kids? Yeah. I mean, this, this might be addressed, you might think that this is your opportunity to address the world, but... It's the kids you should be addressing, you know, yes. your fellow graduates in a sense. Absolutely. Well, I've done some research over the past few days to see if you now have more honorary degrees from Jesuit institutions than Tim Russert, and it looks like you have now tied his record with your upcoming degrees from Loyola and Scranton. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I was, the first time I'm hearing about it is right now, <laughs> so it's kind of a surprise. I'm really honored. I really... I see it as a way to connect to Jesuit higher ed and also to, to celebrate it um, and to sort of bring light to uh, all of our great schools. I really, Jesuits are not supposed to be proud, but I'm, I'm really proud of those degrees. Well, we're very proud to have you as part of the honorary Jesuit alumni network. Um, a bonus question for you. Do you have a favorite Jesuit catchphrase that you like to use in your speeches? <laughs> Um, I think Ghost at the World on Fire is a big one, but really man and woman for others. Uh, and a lot of times just for fun, I'll say, uh, you know, I'll try to use the mascot of the school in some way. So just for fun. And I'll say, go, go Stags, for example. Yeah. And that, that usually gets us cheer. Do you have a favorite mascot? <laughs> I, am, I, I am agnostic. <laughs> when it comes to the mascots, I love all the schools equally. Well, I think that that's a good response. Well, I think that that's it for our interview. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be able to speak with us. And thank you, too, for your service, for inspiring so many students. And I, I hope that, that you will continue to do that. And, you know, maybe next year you'll break the record. <laughs> well, thanks. And thanks for all the terrific work that AJCU does. I thank mean, you. You, are, you are a terrific organization. And thank you for supporting uh, all the wonderful institutions of Jesuit higher education and the students and the faculty, presidents and their families. That's great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs>